I wonder why it's not. Okay. Unique New York. Unique. <laughs> Unique. Episode five point at three quarter. Five right, point three quarter. Fuck it. Jesus. <laughs> Sorry about all these fucking technical issues we're having. We're trying out some new uh, gear that's not working for us that well right now. We were trying um, to get fucking fancy for these fucking international superstars Nick's got on the show. I know, man. Sheep's clothing. <laughs> doing big things, man. We got our first international guests. This is the fourth time I've had to say this. <laughs> um, <laughs> Just apologize for their name one more time. Yeah, like, okay. Yeah. Our, <laughs> our guests this week, I uh, hope I'm saying it right. I still don't know because we didn't even Skype chat our guests before we got on. Um, Krupskaya from the UK. I've been a huge fan since the, the days long ago of MySpace. Um, stumbled upon them fucking like nearly a decade ago, and I've been hooked ever since to the point where when MySpace went down and no one, I couldn't find anything from them anymore, I scoured the internet to find one fucking album that's on their YouTube channel, and I've played it religiously probably at least three times a week. You know, just fucking planet, dude. And I fucking love them. And I was corresponding with Tim, the guitarist. Thank you, Tim, for everything you put together, man. Like, super stoked about this show. And you're a fucking awesome dude. Like, fucking props and shit. Uh, yeah, so. Dylan, what's been up with you this week? Nothing. I <laughs> miss. <laughs> 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 Ah, oh, shit. So, uh, let me take a minute. <laughs> You've been sick? Have you? Have you been sick, Dylan? Oh, yeah. Real sick. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> so, what's been up with you, John? <laughs> we haven't heard from you. Wait, let me tell you. <laughs> Is your mic working, John? Yeah, fuck it. We're close enough. <laughs> I gotta read lips. We need subtitles. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So, um, yeah, I started a new job this week. <laughs> you want to take a guess what that is, Dylan? Are you driving for a... <laughs> I don't fucking know. I'm telling yeah, you, I'm, uh, what's funny is when we do these... We just talked about this on our break, or on our third break. It was, uh, we just black out when we do these things. It's funny because I couldn't tell you anything I say. You know, I say stuff I probably shouldn't say. And Ashley tells me after she watches it. So, yeah, I get the same. In the heat <laughs> of the moment. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I started a new job at a uh, <clears throat> fucking warehouse that makes heaters for pools. Yeah, that's fucking cool. Yeah, pool heaters. And I drive around, and I'm, I'm. We have this thing every Friday called Fruity Friday, where I have to go to Publix and pick up like three hundred dollars worth of fruit, and then hand it out to people and say Happy Fruity Friday. Well, that's cool. I want to kill myself. <laughs> oh come on! There's nothing wrong with. That's <laughs> <laughs> all right. What, Josh? All right, so, <laughs> yeah, and like I was saying before when we were live, I basically have to wing this entire interview because all of my <laughs> notes that I wrote for this interview are in my phone, which I've spur of the moment had to use for this cast because we were getting so much feedback from being in the same room when we were in Josh's office. So at least I have these cute cats running around out here now. <laughs> you got cats? Yeah, I got, I got kids. Cute fucking, cats. <laughs> fucking kids running around everywhere. <laughs> but yeah, so not much new in the new going on these days. So, uh, <laughs> how's your uh, breast milk venture going, Dylan? Uh, she just started pumping, so we started freezing some here recently. Um, we got a lot of positive feedback from it, so I'm definitely going to post it on Craigslist. You know. <laughs> <clears throat> well, here's the thing. The people on I actually did look into it a little further. The people on Craigslist, they honestly, uh, they they like limit to who they sell it to. 
Oh, I, I don't know what it's called. The people that uh, that pour breast milk on their faces. I guess there's some sort of fetish, fetish about milk. it. Yes. Yeah. Well, they're like no, no fetish stuff allowed. So it's always <laughs> it's seriously it's strictly for you, babies and. You okay with your wife pumping for fetish needs? I don't give a damn. That's like specialty milk. You know. It's, <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. supply and demand. If everybody else doesn't sell it to him, I'll sell it to him. <laughs> you guys see that movie Heavyweights where they so- shove all the uh, the uh, the junk food in a log and the guy leaves the money there? You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> That's how many so I don't have to fucking see him. A bunch of perverts. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I guess without any further ado, let's get this uh, interview underway. I'm going to need y'all's help, man. <laughs> So, any questions you might have? It's <clears throat> it's not showing up on your desktop audio. It shows up on the on the mic audio auxiliary, but not on the desktop. Listen, don't yell at us. You're the Uh, drop your mic or your video out and keep your audio on our phones. <laughs> we'll figure it out next week. Who's going to remember the duck question? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we can hear him. We'll just have to relay what he says. So, yeah. And. It looks like we we have some gentlemen popping up now. <laughs> I was like, who is that? What's up, guys? <laughs> <laughs> How's everybody doing tonight? Everybody looks pissed. <laughs> <laughs> They're so angry. <laughs> can you guys hear us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we can hear you. Can you hear us? Right on. Yeah, sorry about all those fucking technical issues we're having. Seem it figures will not happen. Like my favorite guest we've ever booked, that this kind of shit would happen. Hi, Royce, man. <laughs> <laughs> so who's Tim? Tim, thank you so much, man, for setting everything up. <laughs> it's, a, it's a pleasure, man. Thanks for having us on. Hey, and uh, yeah. tell tell Naomi McShannon that we appreciate you guys using her Skype. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah, no problem, okay, man. so I guess let's jump into this here. Um, so how when did you guys start playing music together? I know that you've had a couple different people switch out, and I think it was just bassists and drummers that kept getting traded out. But um, when did you guys start, start playing music together? Um, uh, Cup Sky started in 2005, December, but we were uh, we were in a band before called, <laughs> um, which was me, Tim, and Matt. Uh, Matt plays bass for us now, but he used to sing in in, <laughs> and then Ed was in a band before with me and me and Matt. Uh, so I mean, that went back to when did that go back to 2000 and, 2003. So uh, yeah. It's one of those things, you know, I mean, it's the same with a lot of scenes that the same people just keep going round and round in, in different bands. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, it's, uh, yeah. A lot, in, of it's around here, a lot of the music around here, We I think we have like five or six bands that everybody just kind of interchanges everybody out. And it's all good, great music, but I mean, it's kind of shitty seeing the same bands over and over and over. <laughs> but, you know, what can you do? Well, yeah. I'm sure people around here got bored of us a long time ago. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's good to see that you guys are still active, you know, like somebody's got to do it shit. So, um, I keep keep hearing everything twice. Uh, Josh, do you think that's his Skype connection or do you think that's the feed? Call me back.
Okay. Well, if if there's any technical issues going on right now, leave it in the comments below, and we'll get it sorted out. Um, I guess we're just gonna push through this shitty fucking quality ass. <laughs> we got going so <laughs> hey dude it's diy what can you do you know <laughs> yeah man keep going so, um, well, we can hear what you're saying I think. so what time so, is it where you guys are at yeah, what 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 time is what time? it all oh, right yeah half two yeah it's half past <laughs> two in the morning oh my well, gosh all this for a shitty interview with us huh <laughs> thank you thank you <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um so like uh i guess individually go around and um just kind of tell everybody who you are you know all right who wants to start you you guys start man. <laughs> <laughs> oh well right. i'm alex i'm the i'm a vocalist Let's not go too far and call say it's singing, but yeah, screaming, shouting. <laughs> yeah, I've always dug your vocal styles though, man. Mm -hmm. Like there's not too many people who can hit that like high range and still sound good in my opinion. And I've been a vocalist in every band that I've ever been in, and that's like kinda like what I strive for when I do vocals. It's like I wanna be as low as possible and like about your range. So I mean I have a pretty like awesome appreciation for your vocals, man. I think they're pretty sick. Unfortunately, I'm a bit of a one-trick pony. I can, that's all I can do. So, I mean, you've got to make the most of what you've got. So, yeah. uh, there you go. Very, very extreme vocal. All right, so who wants to go next? Uh, I'm Ed. I play drums, and I do most of the artwork. Nice, dude. Yeah, that artwork's pretty fucking killer. Like, I, for the longest time, I didn't know you guys were from the UK. I always thought you were from fucking Chernobyl or some shit. <laughs> Just because everything is about, like, <laughs> well, fucking not, mutation, not, mutation shit. We've got physical deformities for the most part. Get <laughs> <laughs> out. He's, he's speaking for himself now. He certainly is. <laughs> 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 okay, so who plays bass? I'm assuming it's him. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> Matt, I play bass. It's Matt Mixer. He likes long walks on the beach and <laughs> sand and <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> so I know everybody like draws inspiration from, you know, other places and stuff, but like what would you guys say are like your greatest in inspiration in like what you strive to sound more like or whatever, or has influenced you to sound the way that you do. Bit of a oh, tricky one. Sorry, go on, Tim. We never really had any uh, point of reference when we started playing. Everyone was in different stuff. Uh, I was in death metal at the time. Alex was in the hardcore, uh, more the hardcore kind of scene. Ed. Uh, Ed liked a bit of everything, and uh, the original bass player was, was again very eclectic, like uh, you know jazz and dance music and everything. So for musical inspiration, we just wanted to do something fast. Uh, that was the kind of main main aim. Uh, other than that, uh, just your average mix of like metal and grindcore, you know, and just abrasive stuff. Really was the the whole thing, but we just wanted to play a bit faster than anything else. That, uh, certainly, that I'd done anyway. Yeah, you got Ricky Bobby syndrome. You want to play fast. So, um, <laughs> like, uh, what would you say the the scenes like out there? Uh, or if there is, uh, go on, Matt. You're the scenes. <laughs> I'm the scenes drama. Well, I don't know. I mean, I think. At the moment, there's been a, a bit of a surge for fast bands again in the UK, but for a while, there was, it was pretty dead for quite a long time. Um, more and more people are starting to put gigs on again, and a few tours are starting to happen, but it's kind of a bit boom and bust. It's a bit like, you know, 
little little moments of things working out and then every now and again it's more difficult um because when bands tour europe it's an extra cost to then get a ferry or a flight into the uk so quite a lot kind of rides on that and in the past it's maybe not been so good for bands but i think there's some good people um sorting things out again now and things are looking pretty positive and there's a load of sort of fast new bands starting up and stuff so it's pretty good yeah there's right some, some cool new bands <clears throat> but i mean the scene, yeah. the scene the scenes generally seem to be pretty small i mean stoke like stoke where we live i mean the scene is pretty much sitting in front of you I mean, yeah this is it. <laughs> <laughs> So, like, um, hostile yeah, resistance isn't there around. <laughs> so, uh, let's say, um, like, since you guys, you guys have been together for like a fucking reasonable amount of time, like, what do you say, 2003? You guys have been for a long time. So, um, about 10 years now. Yeah. Yeah, a decade. So, uh, how, like, what would you say would be like the hardest part of keeping your shit together that long? You know what I mean? And keep moving forward. Well, we had quite a break. Yeah, I mean, we, we we had a break from sort of start of 2010 till 2013. But, I mean, uh, it's just trying to keep things fresh, like trying to just try out new ideas all the time, new ways of working. Uh, and, you know, Matt, who we, we've known for a long time, he's brought a lot, lot of new kind of cool stuff to the band and, is like a cement mixer bass sound is uh <laughs> goes down well and, and matt also does second vocals now as well which which helps me out quite a lot because i mean like you were saying due to terrifying highs and the you know the yeah. and the lows and stuff i mean it, it rips your throat out so uh yeah so you i give all stamina. the hard bits. yeah yeah i mean i so i give all the hard bits to matt now i mean he's he has to do all <laughs> the difficult vocal parts and play bass and i just get the kind of uh squawk away um but i don't know I mean, we get on we get on pretty well as people and we so i don't really think actually want to, want to do that seriously want to give time to the bank to fuck all and uh, put in hours of practice i really want to do it <laughs> finding a finding a lineup is it's hard and financially just paying making sure that everything's everything's cool and you've got money to pay for things you need to do that's the hardest part for me and yeah. finding serious, serious musicians who actually will be where they are supposed to be when you all arrange to be there etc uh, that's definitely the hardest yeah I mean we all have to be respectful to everybody else's kind of situations and you know yeah. we, we'll do what we can and if we can't do it, we can't do it. But uh, you know, I mean, we've uh, we've done some pretty cool tours over the years, and uh, I don't, I don't really think we've we've ne never had an argument, have we? Particularly, come close. <laughs> no, really. Not like some bands who are arguing constantly and etc. And I like we we tend to get on quite well. I think like I think it helps to like creatively. I think a lot of bands maybe they get in. For the social side or right. you know, for, for the ego trip whereas i think we've always been quite aligned on why we're doing this and there's no end point when it comes to being extremely noisy dickheads so there's always been extra room to pursue there's always been another level we can go to so we've been that preoccupied with just making a racket that all the usual things that set in and ruin bands hasn't really affected us yet no not yet <laughs> there's always time <laughs> So, um, like I was kind of, I was, when I was talking to Tim, like, uh, <laughs> he was saying that you guys don't have like that, that fans are like few and far between, but like, I don't understand. I like, I feel like if you guys were in America, you'd be like so much bigger. Like, I really don't get how like you guys haven't taken off. You know what I mean? Like, I remember the first time, like the first time I heard, uh, earth burns beneath my feet. Which was actually my fucking MySpace profile song, like fucking eight years ago. I was just like, I was fucking blown away by it, dude. I was just like, I've fucking literally never heard anything like this in my entire life. Like, I have never heard, like, 
that level of heaviness in, say, grindcore with <clears throat> that style of vocals on top of it. Like, it was just like, I don't know, it was like the perfect storm for me of just like, I was, I don't know, I just fucking, I instantly fell in love with it. And like, I've been telling people about you guys since then. You know what I mean? Nick isn't normally and, like this. He's definitely fangirling out on you guys. Just like, <laughs> you know. Man, we're loving it. We're loving it. It doesn't normally happen. Yeah, keep going. <laughs> Continue. I'm sorry for interrupting. <laughs> I, I just, I feel like you guys need to do a U.S. tour. Like, I, I feel like that's what needs to happen. You need a tour just with somebody. Need someone to uh, do like help us out and do it. We'd love to do it. Uh, We'll definitely be there if someone books the shows. We'll, we'll, we'll be there, sort of thing. It's yeah, I mean, yeah. So it's hard we could to come know. over. I mean, it's hard to get around the US, you know, like for, right. for us, it's an enormous compared to where we live, and it's an enormous place. Uh, so, we wouldn't even know where to start in doing a, a US tour, really. We've got some, some yeah. friends here and there, but not, a, not enough to book it, you know. Uh-huh. I think like, uh, <laughs> my buddy, like I was telling you about my buddy Tristan, his uh, his band was all about setting up a tour with you guys, and um, sadly they had just parted ways because I don't know something wasn't working out. But he's putting something together now, and uh, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Recreant before. Have you ever heard of Recreant? Recreant. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, that that was his last band, and they they toured all over the fucking place and made contacts and shit and. He's just, um, he's basically just waiting for shit to fall into place so he gets back out on tour. Like, he basically just, that's all he wants to do is tour, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean... Well, we'd, we'd be up for it, man. Yeah, and I mean, I'm sure, like, like I said, I'm sure that it would, like, it would catch fire out here, man. It really would, just because we don't get that kind of sound out here, you know? Like, like I was talking to Tim, like, everybody wants to be power violence or, like, everybody wants to you know, be a certain thing. We don't really have, like, there's there's a lot of good grind bands from around here and stuff, but, I mean, it's it's not, like, what it used to be, you know? Like, it's, yeah. it's basically, a you know... Of pure- bands sound quite similar, you know, like, if, uh, if you watch ten grindcore bands, nine of them are going to sound probably the same as each other. And yeah, if I get sure. one who's doing something a bit different, I... I don't know, it's an acquired taste a little. Some people really like it, some people aren't always so sure like it. <laughs> yeah, when I when I was on, on Facebook earlier, um, I posted a status and I was like, if anybody has a you know question for a Krups guy or whatever, let me know and I'll ask them on the air. And I'm pretty sure that the only question that got asked is, when are they going to start playing good music? <laughs> 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 yeah, we've, we've, we've been asked that a few times. We've asked ourselves a lot. So, yeah. Sometimes just music. Just yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're gonna stop it. playing music. I mean, I think it's it's maybe difficult. Some people who are really into music, um, I mean, and have a quite a wide uh, range of tastes, seem to seem to like it. But I mean, if people want to hear, I don't know, if people want to hear crust or grindcore, I mean, it's uh, it, it kind of like it's not really in step with. Uh, with a lot of bands and and I think sometimes people I don't know if the, it's not quite what they're expecting to hear so they kind of just switch off from it straight away and say like oh no no it doesn't sound like I don't know who the biggest grind big grind core bands are now but um so I mean we're definitely a niche market kind of thing but uh or maybe not I don't know maybe we should tour the states and uh be flying back on our private jets and all this stuff <laughs> <laughs> I think it's like anything though if, if you make it easy for people then you know like you said oh why, why a band like Krupp Sky have blown up well Krupp Sky mix a few different things together and that's why I've always liked the band and you know when they got back together I thought all oh, right cool okay I'll play bass um did you know <laughs> I did <laughs> but uh <laughs> yeah uh I think you know you, you, if you don't play it completely safe, it it makes it more difficult for you to fit nicely into them little niches and them little sort of um, subgenres of of scenes and whatever, and and then that way it doesn't quite become the 
the cool band t-shirt to have or the cool gig to be seen to be going on Facebook or whatever. And that's maybe where things were more exciting in Russia, where there was no concept of cool. There was no concept of... They're fucking mad, aren't they? Of, of like, what, what fucking scenes what or whatever. They were just happy that there was some, like, some full-on music happening with total DIY ethics in their town, and that was enough. So they just came out just expecting whatever kind of thing. There was no, like... Yeah, no preconceptions. Yeah, it was like, like... should sound like. Yeah. So, but I think even when we've played places that have had more of a scene, <clears throat> we've gone down better with less so with people that are specifically into grind or metal, and more people that just like music and maybe the, 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 the like a bit of jazz or rock or metal or whatever, and kind of have a an interest in music in general, not just grind. Because I think if you're just into grind, listen to something else because you're going to think we're well, shit. That's probably fairly accurate. But, so you guys but, do better but, around festivals. Have we ever done a festival? Never played a festival? No, we've yeah, we got done, a, one done a few, week. but not really. We didn't. We haven't done Obscene Extreme or anything like that. We've, we've done a couple. <laughs> um, we seem to do best the further we go, the further away we go, and the more off the beaten track it is. The band seems to be in its element, from my point of view. We're, we don't argue with each other. We can drive for hours and hours and hours and get out of the van and play a gig and be good, we're not fussy about uh, getting money and getting all the like, sort of fancy food and all this stuff. Uh, I think that's where we do best is when it's like kind of when some of these bands who are all dead cool and ponce around, um, some of them are just gonna like they'd, they'd never be able to do that. <clears throat> There's other things we can't do, we can't headline obscene extreme or whatever. But I don't think any of us really want to, it's, it's just more like. Oh, for me, it's just, it was always uh, expression and just trying to communicate with people. And that's what it was. Like, I don't really care about bullet belts and these things that people do. None of us have got tattoos, you know, we're just like uh, pretty bored kind of people. <laughs> <laughs> Is he still talking to us? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so. Um, <clears throat> Like, so what are some of the places that you guys have toured to? Um, well, we played all over Southeast Asia. We did like Borneo, uh, Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore. Uh, we played Russia, Ukraine, all over Europe. Um, I think we've done how many, like 20, 23 countries now. Iceland was cool. Yeah, we played in Iceland last year as well. That was that was really cool. Um, they seem to have a decent scene going. Yeah, that was really cool in Iceland. I mean, it was uh, very vibrant. <laughs> Of a, I don't know, vibrant scene with lots of bands that sounded different. Um, it was that was a real good experience that one. Um, but yeah, about 20, 23, 24 countries so far. Um, and like Tim said, I mean, when we when we go, the further away we go, and the kind of crazier the places we go, the better the response we get. Um, so yeah, Russia was good. South Asia was great. Um, what was the weirdest place that you played? What's the one? The weirdest place you've played, like the weirdest venue. Oh, there's, there's a uh, we played a morgue in Berlin. We played a morgue. Uh, we played a rice field. We played a coal mine. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> In the Ukraine, we played like a squat. It's, um, it was like a communist built mental health hospital that had become a, a punk squat. So yeah. the first gig we played in Ukraine was in this really creepy building. That was cool. Yeah. I played upstairs, downstairs, outside, uh, in small room, big rooms, uh, shit places, nice places, grills, grills, uh, barbecue takeaways, uh, pretty much anything you could think of. Probably. We played an actual rock venue once. That was pretty fucking weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we we have uh, a real venue as well. <laughs> Just once. Don't think that'll come round again. Um, but yeah, I mean, we'll play, we'll play anywhere. I mean, there's no rock star attitudes. There's no bullshit. Right. We don't ask for rights. You know, I mean, we, we'll say like, I mean, we'll play for whatever's fair on the door. You know, it's. Uh, I'm not gonna. I mean, we've heard of other bands marching people to the cash point. You know, to the ATM yeah. to get. 
to get their money in. I mean, we're not interested in any of that bullshit. We we're just too lazy to walk. We just want to. We just want to play, and I mean, we played some cool places for cool people, and we've never been, we've never been ripped off, and we've we've never had really had any bad experiences, you know. So, and like every other DIY band, you know, we have turned up occasionally and played to three people, but yeah. shit happens, doesn't? It? So, well, maybe you guys shouldn't <laughs> come to the states because they will rip you the fuck off. <laughs> yeah. got that now. So, that's a big lad. <laughs> I'm serious. Your guys' <laughs> attitude is awesome. I mean, it's uh, we were the same way when we played. We just played just to play, and they could keep all the money. We were never in it for the money. I mean, we just played to just to have our friends go somewhere to hang out for a night. No, but that's that's not you. Where you guys tour, it sounds a lot better than playing in Florida or Alabama. <laughs> so yeah, that's yeah, awesome. It's because I mean, that's your backyard, isn't it? And for for us, that's like a new adventure. But right. I mean, it's a. Uh, I don't know. I mean, like, I mean, you, you, you. If you're in a band, you'd probably want to come and play in Stoke. Yeah, and right. we think, right. why? why would you want to do hey, palm trees are pretty grindcore, by the way. I don't know if you guys knew that or not. Dylan, I don't. I don't think that we ever got paid for one gig we ever fucking played ever. Like uh, <laughs> of all time, mostly because we caused too much property damage. They just thought it wasn't in their best concern to pay us. Yeah, that, I mean, <laughs> that's true too. <laughs> I know Matt Welsh didn't give us a goddamn red cent. <laughs> so, do you have any questions, Dylan? No, I'm good. You guys are awesome. I mean, your attitudes are are cool. You guys are nice. <laughs> your attitudes are <laughs> so, yeah. such aggressive music for such a nice guys. That's a motto <laughs> you can take to the bank. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but when, when we meet most grind bands, I mean they're generally pretty pretty cool people and yeah, really right. nice. I've and seen nice it's, people around if you look for them. Yeah, I've seen it's one of the best things about it is the people we've met, and the people we've stayed with. Uh, we've always said you can turn up somewhere you don't know anyone, you can't even always speak the language, and by the end of the gig you're your friends, and that, that's. I don't think you get that if you're a big touring metal band and you've got a manager and you spend the, the whole tour on the bus, you get out for the gig and there's catering and all that stuff. It, that's how they make their, their money. Away, but it's not anything, I don't know if it, any of us really ever considered as, as being a goal. You know, sort of drive around with Well, if you guys ever, really if you make, if you guys ever make it to the states, I got a drum set. I got a bass stack. I got a bass. You got a singer. We'll be there. Okay. All you got to do is just get someone to book us some gigs and tell us when, and we'll we'll, uh, we'll sort it That'd out. Be awesome. It'd be killer. Yeah, I mean, I I could probably try to look into that for you guys. I actually have some some pretty good connects in that area, but yeah. um, we just need. I don't know if anybody else is having a hard time. I don't know if anybody else is having a hard time hearing Tim. I, he keeps cracking up on my yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can't hear yeah, him. I, I can't really hear anything. It's really difficult to hear. <laughs> <Keep repeating. laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Uh, we'll have to have Just you guys back on here sometime and uh, get everything squared away. I don't know what's going on. I think it's just like the quality of the Skype call that we're using. Yeah, it might be because we're so far away, but um, yeah, cool, man. It's kind of like what our right. recording process is. I just don't know what the other people are doing. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> like I said, this is about the best we can get figured out for DIY right now. I mean, <laughs> we're sponsored by Skype. You get what you pay for. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's all cool. <laughs> no yes. yeah. DIY is what it is, isn't it? Sometimes it's a. Uh, sometimes it turns out as a total disaster, and other times it's ace. <laughs> and uh, you just take it as it comes. But cheers for uh, cheers for talking to us. Yeah, thanks. The the thing about like our show or whatever is like, um, we might not catch a lot of live viewers like as we're going. Sometimes it'll be more than often, but I mean, um, usually each video that we put out gets about like you know like six or seven hundred like or seven hundred views or some shit like that. So I mean, it's it'll get seen eventually. So, uh, thing you're doing, I'm going to be tuning in every week. <laughs> there you go. We got a follower. 
There you we go. got a fucking viewer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but uh, feel free. There's a, the Skype numbers on there, man. If you guys are ever watching or whatever, you can call in, and the quality would be way better over a call, I think, than a video. We probably should have just had you guys over the phone and looked at a picture of you or something. <coughs> yeah, that's no, cool. Well, well, I'm going to stay in touch sort of thing. Yeah, for sure. Well, this is like this is only our fifth episode, man. Like we're We're cranking these bitches out every week, and I finally just got to the point where I'm like booking – ahead of time so like i have like a month to work on actual content instead of trying to scramble and find somebody for the show so show will be looking up man it'll definitely get better and i would love to have you guys back on and actually you know be able to ask you some more intellectual questions and shit like i was saying to them i wrote down a fuck ton of questions to ask you guys but they're all in my phone <laughs> and i'm using my phone to video chat you so i can't look at my fucking questions yeah, it's, <laughs> oh my, whenever you want we're around we're, we're going to be working on some some new stuff coming out hopefully by the end of the year so perhaps we can talk then you know we'll send you some stuff yeah well it was or a fucking the parcel will be there soon in in the next week the package will arrive so. right on we'll get everything squared away but um thank you guys for coming out and having talking with us i know it's late over there i don't want to keep you guys up too late no worries yeah no worries cheers yeah, cool. Tim's looking a bit tired over there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nice. Nice. Um, you guys have anything you want to like uh, tell people about? Anything coming up? Uh, any new albums or tour information, yeah, yeah. show? Anything like that? Your band camp, whatever? Uh, over to you guys. Yeah, we got, we got like uh, Somebody was three... Somebody besides <laughs> we got um, we got three three split twelve inches coming out. We got a split with a Ukrainian band called Foible Instinct. Uh, that's that's gone to press now. Uh, then we got a split with a German band called Wojciech. Um I think they toured the states a couple of times. A great great band, great guys. Uh, and then um, there's another split with an Icelandic band called Norn, uh, who are like a sort of crusty black metal band. They're they're eight, they're great. Um, and we should be touring in Ukraine, possibly in uh, Ukraine, Georgia, and Armenia, possibly in uh, October, and then hopefully next year we'll do Siberia. So uh, <laughs> that should be a good one. Um, <laughs> but we was we were supposed to do that a couple of years ago, but it was um, uh, but we ended up not being able to do it, so it's kind of been postponed. But that's kind of a uh, that's my dream, play from Vladivostok to Moscow and uh, everything in between. I don't think anybody's ever done it before. So uh, let's give it a go. <laughs> possibly for good reasons. Yeah, possibly for good reasons. <laughs> but, I mean, I asked my friend, I said, uh, what do you think the roads will be like? And this Russian guy like Dennis, he said, uh, the roads will be real bad. It's like, <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> so, so maybe we'll be lost in Siberia, but uh, uh, it should be a good experience. <laughs> well, yet again, you know, thank you guys for coming on. Um, uh, I'll link all your your uh, band camp information and shit like that to the page so everybody <laughs> can find y'all if they're in so interested in doing so. Um, yeah, you guys have a fucking great night, man, and thanks a fucking million for coming on. It's our yeah. pleasure, man. Everything, everything we've ever recorded is on Bandcamp. We put it all up, so it's there for free. Um, and if people want to buy the records, then that's that's cool. But uh, enjoy. Yeah, the, the only thing I was yeah. able, the only thing I was ever able to find was uh, your split with uh, who was it? It's like Shoto Shotokan or something like that. Sandokan. Sandokan. Yeah, yeah. I, the I can't pronounce that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that was our that was like the last thing we recorded as uh, like before we had our little break. Um, that's that's not pretty good. But the new stuff is kind of like uh, maybe it's a bit of a step up from that. I think it's faster and tighter and maybe a little bit more song orientated. So we actually have yeah. some chorus now. <laughs> so uh, you know you can sing along. <laughs> yeah, I found. Uh... I found it on Discogs, and 
when I got it, I was I like took it out of the packaging and I fucking pull it out and it's on that like translucent fucking clear white vinyl. Oh my god, dude, that shit looks so sick. They like I'm surprised that it even still fucking plays. I've listened to it so much. <laughs> like I've worn that bitch thin for sure. <laughs> well, it's the, the the same guys putting out the the split with Foible Instinct, so maybe it'll be on uh, maybe it'll be on a cool uh, another cool vinyl color. I don't know. I mean, let's see how see how big his wallet is. <laughs> <laughs> you check right, them out, though. It's Seven Degrees Records in Germany. They've got a decent decent amount of stuff. The guy knows his shit. Yeah, right he's on. a bass bass player in a band called Kaiser, and um, he's a uh, he puts out like cool, cool bands like the the generally pretty cutting edge stuff. I mean, he's a great guy. So band dust. Oh, yeah, <laughs> he put us that out as well. So, <laughs> well, I'm gonna stay in touch with Tim, and I'm gonna I'll send you guys some. Uh, I have a couple people that you know I've a couple of bands that I've been in and stuff put out like uh, splits on like cassette tapes and. All kinds of shit on like DIY shit, and if you guys are interested in that, I can shoot you their information as well, and you know, get you all rolling out here too. Yep. Yeah, cool. Yeah, cool. Oh, nice. And anything you want from us, just just I mean, we'll we'll try and I don't know what we've got left, but we'll try and send you some stuff like some records and whatever. Oh yeah, Tim's already got me taken care of on that department. Yeah, I think fucking... we've got pretty much everything that you know, hold of uh, on its way. T-shirts. Ah, the complete discovery. Yeah, dude. That oh, shit's yeah. gonna be like fucking Christmas morning for me. <laughs> <laughs> look out for it in the next week or two. It should be there, so I just look out for it. Yeah, I think right, Tim. I think Tim sent you all the recordings of like the the stuff that's not out yet. So nice. That should be. That's awesome. Yeah, and I got the <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well. uh Thanks again for coming out, and yeah, I'll cheers, keep dude. in touch. And hopefully, we can get you back on when we're up and rolling a little bit more quality. You know, got more quality going on. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Nice one, thanks. Yeah, thank you very much. All right, guys. Take later, care, guys. See you later. See you later. I'm hungry. <laughs> right on. <laughs> Wow, so, I, I feel yeah. like a pussy because I'm the only one wearing a white shirt. <laughs> <laughs> but that's also the story of my life. So, <laughs> all right. So, uh, did anybody got the time? I can't really see it on my phone. It's like we also started like 30 minutes late. There's a clock right here. Yeah, so that interview was a little bit shorter than normal. But I mean, with the issues we were having, I we couldn't quality. Do- yeah, we couldn't do a whole hour because I don't think anybody would sit and watch it. <laughs> All right. No, that was awesome. Those are cool guys, man. And uh, yeah. just to let you know, you got to start hooking up your band leader with some uh, 3XLs, you know? <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> there's no... So, um, there's no do I we have any... Huh? Do we have any viewers right now at all? Oh, let me check. Yeah, we got a few. Okay, well, now is that time that if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or whatever, give us a little call on our Skype line. Number should be at the bottom of the screen. If you can't see it, it's 813-369-69, Jeff Gordon, which is 24, Bintay Quattro. So... Yeah, if you guys have any questions or anything, you want to call in, just chat, whatever. We got some time to kill. Other than that, uh, seen anything good on TV? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I watched Stranger Things. Just a uh, just a recap from last week. I oh, uh, I made a a stupid comment. I apologize. <laughs> Facebook Live. I said that Tell I could not. What? I said I could not get into the Stranger Things. So, with with that being said, I went back and started watching, and I finished it the same day, from three right to 
Why are there only like eight episodes? What kind of fucking show does that? I thought shows have like twelve or thirteen. <laughs> they just, you know, they're they're trying to fucking build up the hype for season two. Yeah, but even Orange is the New Black had like thirteen <laughs> episodes. <laughs> I think the only reason I watched I watched thirty seconds of Orange is the New Black. That's it. The very That's first cool. thirty seconds in which you see Donna's titty. <laughs> it's, no, hot right. it's hot Donna to you. It's hot Donna to you. I was like, there's no reason to watch any more of this. Like, and Donna's not even that attractive. I was just like, uh, I've known her from that 70s show, and that's what her titty looks like. So <laughs> <laughs> the pieces come together. <laughs> so I, I just, I've had no reason to fucking watch it at all. Um, hey, so um, Donna, I know you've been doing a lot of work, Nicholas, and I am very proud of you. Who in the hell do you got coming up in in the future here? Um, I got. <laughs> um. <laughs> so next week, uh, we have Bang Ring. We got Bang Ring on next um, week. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about Bang Ring. That should be pretty good. Cool. I wonder if they're gonna have the whole band on or. What? Right, do, have know. you talked to them about if they're Skyping or calling in? or? Uh, I haven't set anything up because it was too far in the future. I was like, this is the date, this is the time. Do you guys want to do it? And they're like, yeah. So I just There's like six of them now? Six? Guitar, guitar, yeah. bass, keyboard. Yeah, there's six of them. That's going to be interesting to see all those little Skype windows. <laughs> well, hopefully they just have... Can you do this with like a like a GoPro? I don't know. Maybe, oh. probably. And I'm also excited. I saw you got a uh, Roger Thomas coming out. Uh, yeah, that's that's three weeks away. Um, some other co- cool guys that I've I've been following that we, me and this dude Dan, met on Facebook a long time ago, and I had I didn't know who he was, but we ended up friends on Facebook somehow, and he was like, "Yeah, check out my band," and I did. They're pretty good. It kind of reminds me of like Amir style shit you know oh what was what was their name it was a tra- tragic or um the hell was it i don't know how to say it it's like tra- tragodia tragodia fucking i don't know but we'll find out once they're on because you book the fucking bands with names we can't say it's bad for our image i know i feel like an <laughs> asshole i feel like such an asshole tragodia <laughs> <laughs> At least if we're going to get it wrong, we need to start sounding more confident. Yeah, for sure. And then, yeah, then Roger um, from Shed For You and... Ophelia. Yeah, all kinds of other crazy shit. He's been making so much music. Like, I I remember Roger from from Shed, and I was just like, that guy look, just looks like Garth from Wayne's World, and he's goofy. And, like, I would always see him at, like, noise shows, like on acid laying on the ground <laughs> like just uh, just this weird dude but i don't know i actually i ran into him at gasper's grotto one night and i was just like holy shit that's roger from shed for you after i had met after i saw chris denny uh, when i was living in um i was living in newport richie and i was at a party and chris denny was there the guitar player for shed for you and i just like saw him across the room and then like he we locked eyes and it's like the rest of the room just faded away. <laughs> and I just, I walked towards him with my arms out, just like, I'm coming in, big guy. <laughs> I, don't, I don't care if you want this hug or not, but you're getting it. <laughs> and like, yeah, and then I fangirled out on him for a little while. And the weird story, like, we actually, we were hanging out, and then for some reason, everybody's just like, you want to go to a fucking graveyard? So we we're like, yeah, let's go to a fucking graveyard. And we get there, and evidently this, like, cemetery is, like, on the top five list of most haunted places in Florida. And evidently, like, all these black slaves were, like, hung out there or some crazy shit. Like, I don't know. But um, we went out there, and we're like, yeah, there's not really much spooky shit going on. But we're, like, walking around the graveyard. And all of a sudden, we turn around, and there's fucking cops out there. (laughs) <laughs> like turn their, cop, their fucking sirens on and we all walk up to the cop car and shit and I'm out there with fucking Chris Denny which was fucking crazy 
And I was like, you know, when I get nervous, I make like stupid fucking jokes and shit. And he, the cop was like patting Chris down. And I was like, don't check his sock. That's where he keeps his crack pipe. <laughs> So the the cop was like extra thorough with him, and then after all after like all was said and done, and we had all been pat down, and we didn't have anything on us, and where he was like about to send us on our way, and he's like, "Do you want to tell us the real reason why you guys were out here?" And I was just like, "What the fuck are you talking about? The real reason we're out here to get spooked? Like it's a graveyard." And they're they're like, "You sure you didn't throw this fucking box of cats out here?" <laughs> and he like reaches in his truck and pulls out a fucking box of cats. And then, like, well, he was like, you guys aren't leaving unless you take these fucking cats with you. Oh. So my friend literally still to this day owns a cat that she got out of a graveyard. Like, I don't know. It was just a fucking weird story. And then, <laughs> yeah, when I, I, I met fucking Roger again, like, I was sitting at Gasper's Grotto, and he walked in, and I walked up to him, and I was like, oh, shit, you know, you're the dude from Shed for You, and blah, blah, blah. He wanted to start a band with me. Like he's like, let's start a fucking grind band. And I'm kind of like kicking myself in the ass for like. You not should be pers- kicking yourself in the ass for that. <laughs> so like, yeah, I was fangirling out on him, and he was just like, "Oh my god, I can't believe anyone like shed for you ever." And I was just like, "Yeah, like I want all of the music right now." So then like, I like pressured. <laughs> him. I pressured him and pressured him until he made a fucking band camp and put the discography up there. So now, thank you. Now, every, now it's for everyone's listening. Thank you. Yeah, that was uh, <laughs> very good, very good. <laughs> I think I have like exhibit E or C or something on the uh, on vinyl. Uh, yeah, I think it was C or I think it was D, the one that's um, all Except, named yeah. after zombie survival guide shit. Yeah, well, it's uh, get up the staircases on it. So it's... yeah, yeah, that was the that's the one I had too for like forever and. I fucking that was just another album that was like awesome for me. And it's kind of it's really cool to like be booking these people that I like actually give a fuck about talking to. Right. Like it's kind of fucking I don't know, humbling or some shit. I don't know what the word is I'm looking for. <laughs> but it's awesome. Well, hey, it's cool that they give you the time of the day. I mean, you've been listening to uh Krups Kaya for years and they give you the time of day for fucking Dude, you definitely fangirled on them. That was hilarious. When you watch it, you're going to be like, what the fuck was I even saying? So it, it was really funny. <laughs> They're probably all just sitting around like, this is what our band's amounted to. <laughs> We're on a podcast in Florida with four viewers. Like, <laughs> <laughs> You can't Boy, even hear Tim. Poor fucking you hear, Tim. You hear him. Did you hear where they've been on tour? That's insane. Like, yeah, yeah. We've, played, we've played Lakeland. <laughs> we played a couple house shows in Gibsonton. <laughs> They're like, yeah, like the played place Serbia. Of, play, the craziest place that I ever played was the fucking Gibsonton crack houses. To this day, like, the craziest was, place I've ever played was probably the Pegasus Lounge, and it's craziest. Every time I go there, it's the same fucking people. It's like a like a time capsule like nobody changes like the chick that books the shows is still the same yeah <laughs> and it's funny because she like remembers who i am but she doesn't give a shit when i go in there she's like oh hey nicholas how you doing even though we caused like at least two thousand dollars worth of damage to that place when we played last time yeah I threw, a, threw the fucking mic stand through the ceiling like that shit was, I was there <laughs> oh was that shit yeah um josh do we still have Farrell's number on file back there because he said he wanted to jump on tonight but i can't call him. oh no. my mom has nothing good to say to that this week <laughs> so that's all we have is um tragodia bangerang robert roger thomas that's it yep Yep, I got a couple other people that I'm working on getting a hold of right now. So I'm I'm gonna try to always stay like a month ahead while I'm booking, so that way we can like focus on our shit we need to do instead of finding guests. <laughs> well, I tell you what, in um the weekend October 23rd, I'm gonna be in California at that Beach Goth Festival. So maybe yeah. I'll try to fucking 
get on my phone and meet some crazy people. Yeah, we could have our our fucking reporter in the field. <laughs> <laughs> I want to I want to do that, but I just don't think it would work live. I think it would just be boring, just me contemplating with myself if I should go talk to these people or not. No, nah, just be on Skype and run around like a chicken with your head cut off out there and just walk up to weird people and make them talk to you. We got to come up with a funny costume for me to wear out there because I, I really want to dress up, but I'm not like the person. Just Here's dress like a big fucking just dress like a big fucking bumblebee or something and like act like you're not even wearing a costume. Just act <laughs> like it's business as usual. Well, let's see, I'm I'm flying in Calif- to California, and I have no car, no hotel room, just straight winging it. Like Justin Mac, I talked to him, and he gave me like this whole breakdown of the things I need to do. He's like, "What you need to do is score some pot, and then use that for rides, because that's the way that you know." It was funny the, just hearing him talk about because he's been there. Yeah, and um, yeah, so I don't know what kind of costume I'm going to be walking around in for three days. <laughs> so. We got to come up with something funny that I can haul in a backpack to California, or just go there to the dollar I store. Have, I have a giant parrot costume. Do you? Do you, will it fit me? Well, because it's really funny. Is Ashley has a cow costume, and I put <laughs> it on, and like the tits actually, the teats, the teats, they the actually butter. with my dick, they actually like come up to my chest. <laughs> with my dick. With my dick. And what's really funny is this entire time that we're talking, I just hear Natalie laughing in the background. <laughs> it's throwing me off. I'm like, who's with Nicholas? And I just remember it. So thank you. So do we have Farrell's number or do I need to pull it out of my phone or something? Josh. Is anybody watching that wants to call in? Why, why isn't it? Why doesn't anybody call us? Fuck, man. I don't know. <laughs> I'm on my phone. Why don't they call us? Is my video still up? Yeah. So you could have had all of them questions. Oh, man, I'm stupid. <laughs> all right, his first number, so it's 813 527. That would be pretty cool to help them guys get into the to the states. That'd be uh, yeah. I had oh. I had talked to him about it before. He's online. He's on the air. Who is Farrell? You hear Farrell? I don't hear Farrell. Well, come out here. Did you just hear somebody? I have no idea. Do you want me to just say his phone number over the air? <laughs> <laughs> well, he's going to have to type it over the air, so what the hell? No, let's just catch him off guard and call him. <laughs> I hope he's doing something fucked up. It's Sunday. I hope he's sleeping. (laughs) You know what a stupid rule is? I went to uh, Polk County Nates today, and um, I tried to buy beer before 11 o'clock, and I think that's a stupid rule. (laughs) Yeah. Would you like to elaborate on that a little? (laughs) (laughs) That's that's all I got. I just think that's a stupid rule. It is. It's ridiculous. I thought I thought this was America. If the if if the gays can get married and I can't buy a beer, you know <laughs> my my one beer a month, and I choose to do it on a Sunday morning. Yeah. So you see anything good on Netflix, man? Anything else that you've been getting into? Uh, what the hell did we start watching? I want to watch. I want to start watching something though, something good. Yeah. Somebody put in the comments. Please leave your message for... Farrell. Farrell. 
No feral. He's just this high and dry. Fuck it. I guess call my mom. See what she has to say. We owe the viewers a full hour and a half. So that's what we will do if we just sit here and banter. That's all we've been doing is bantering with each other. But Hello? Fuck it. I guess call my mom. She has to say. You're on the air. I've been te- you know what? You got all kinds of text on there, but nobody turn, can. You hey, can't see turn, the text. Turn your computer down. I said there's all kinds of people talking to you on the thing, but you can't see them. Yeah. Yeah, we can. Then why don't you answer any of the freaking people? Because that involves <laughs> texting. Hey, if you I did watch Net. Netflix. We did watch Netflix. What'd you watch? The movie that me and you and your dad watched. Oh, yeah. The Fundamentals of Caring. Yeah, that's a good show. That's a movie. (laughs) Yeah, a movie. (laughs) All right, well, tell us us what it was about. Uh, You refresh my memory. You got to mute your computer. (laughs) You remember remember Paul Paul Rudd was... uh... Oh, I did see that movie. That was a good movie. That was a good show. He was helping the, the handicapped kid. Oh, yeah, kid. I remember now. The yeah. kid was paraplegic. <laughs> yeah. And he was, the little fucker was something else. He would, like, act like he was choking <laughs> to death and dying. And this poor guy thought he was, and he was joking with him. Yeah, that's a good show. Well, tell us about what it's about. The, his mother <coughs> was a, um, a bank manager, and she was trying to find someone to take care of him while she was at work. And the, everybody that uh, applied for the job, he scared the shit out of them, or, and none of them would take the job. Well, when this guy came in, right. he said, he, he said he's the one. He's the one he wants. So he got him, and then he took him on a road trip, and he well, got him his first girlfriend. In. He got him to stand up in, on a flatboard from an ambulance to take a piss standing up for the first time. He um, saw a baby born. It was like, yeah, it was just like his best friend. <laughs> he saw a baby born. Yeah, I did. Remember the girl? Yeah. Where It was down in that hole, wasn't it? Or the, yeah, uh, the yeah, it, yeah, in the pit? hole, yeah. Yeah, where they... And then they went and seen the the biggest cow, but it was a fake cow. And they made, he made him carry his wheelchair and him up these stairs to look at a stuffed cow. And then they had to carry it back down. It, it was like, pretty good. They were like, okay, we're done. <laughs> yeah. So do, you, do you remember what the point of them going on the road trip was? To see his father. Ooh, and what his father? Yeah, his father's a dick. His father told him that he didn't want anything to do with him. He didn't want his mother to have him because he was going to be handicapped and offered him $60 and told him to go on his way. But the moral of the story, the kid got letters every month, and he thought it was from his his father. And he had stacks and stacks of these letters. But... Then the father was such an asshole. Told him that he never wrote him, a, never wrote him a letter, and it was his mom that wrote all the letters to him, because he didn't, she didn't want him to know what an asshole his father was. Yeah, it was good. Okay, is that, <laughs> is, is that all you have for Netflix for this week? Because I think we owe the viewers a little more than that. The boy died, right? Uh huh. Did he die? How long did he live after? No, after? he didn't die. He acted like he died because he was re- the guy that took care of him um, <coughs> was writing like a book about him at the end of the show, and it said that he died. But then he goes, "No, he didn't. He was just joking." Oh, that's he, right. I cried. Yeah, remember? Yeah. All right, Mom. Uh, sad movie. I got, I got, I got a little something better. Okay. Tell us about Dexter. Dexter. Dexter, the show. Yeah, what about it? Tell us what it's about. <laughs> Murder, Dexter. Hey, um, you know, I just watched an episode of, you know what, ID, uh, 
it's like how to kill your husband shit on TV every day. I watch that shit. The, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Look out, Tom. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> what is the show? How to you kill know, your husband. <laughs> well, I'm joking. It's not really how to kill your husband, but it's the murder shows that... Um, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? It's yeah. called ID, and it's like true stories that happen. This guy, speaking of Dexter, did, killed somebody, put up in his garage, and he was a film, um, made films, and he wanted to make a film of killing somebody. So he literally took this person and conned them into coming <laughs> to this garage where he was at and thinking that he was going to meet a girl because it was online shit. So moral of, his, moral of this story is don't ever meet people online because they could be fucking Dexter killers. So anyway, he killed the guy and cut him up in pieces and all this shit. And yeah, <clears throat> it was just like Dexter. So what is the plot to Dexter? Who is Dexter? The, Dexter is a guy that is a... Um, forensic scientist and he goes to um, all the crime scenes to see the blood spatter and he tells them how they were killed by the blood spatter stuff. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and what are, what are like Dexter's demons? What does he struggle with? His dark with, passenger. <laughs> with his sister? Because I think... I think I think he was like in love with his sister. He was. Deb. Yeah, wasn't he? I thought I thought I think he was. His dark <laughs> dark passenger. Yeah, and um he has a child. And yeah, he he just all kinds of fucked up. You're just skimming over everything. That's cuz I'm fucking depressed and tired. Did she finish <laughs> the Did you finish the up all of it? Oh yeah, I watched every one of them. What did you think of the last episode? Is that when he killed the black cop? <clears throat> no. The, the, la the uh, la la yeah, black he cop. He killed his boss. <laughs> Some fries, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, he killed his boss. Remember in the in the La container? Guerta, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I'm talking about the end end where he went on the <laughs> where he wound up after everybody died. Where was he? I don't even I don't remember that one. Where he was a lumberjack. No, he wasn't. What? Are you guys serious? Remember that. <sighs> Seriously? <laughs> How are you going to bring up a show and not know it? Watch the last episode again. I thought that he got on the boat and went somewhere. To become a lumberjack. <laughs> no, he did not. I'm telling you. To be a lumberjack. Huh? Where do you have to get on a boat to go become a lumberjack? Yeah, that's what I'm he saying. He had he I'm had a giant he beard. Lumberjack. He had an axe, and he was wearing a flannel. What the hell do you? He's a lumberjack. <laughs> no, he's gonna kill ah. some fucking body. <laughs> I think it was a lumberjack. He's a lumberjack. Really? <laughs> I'm gonna have to watch it. Again. I'm gonna have I mean, to watch the last one. Just watch the last episode, and then you'll be like, "You're right. Mm. I was wrong about Stranger Things." Hey, I told you that was a good show. Yeah. It starts off real slow, but then it gets good. The first three episodes, I wanted to turn it off, too. Yeah, I did. And then I heard you talk about it, and I just really wanted to watch it. Yeah, uh, yeah. after you get past those first three episodes, then it's pretty good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, Ash kept, Ashley kept telling me to watch California something or another. Californication. Yeah, there you go. What What is that about? Oh, I'm not going to... No, you got to watch it. It's about a writer. You can't do your job for you. <laughs> it's about yeah, a writer, like and nothing goes right for him. He's a he's a big he's a big screw up. So it's pretty funny. Mm -hmm. You got to watch it. Yeah, I don't want to ruin it for you. Is there like murder and stuff in it? Uh, nothing. No, I don't think so. It's more of like yeah, a would, it's a dark. I wouldn't comedy. like it. I I like freaking murder and all kinds of. I like that kind of shit. What is that <laughs> called? Um, Sex, drugs, and rock and roll. 
Yeah. What is it called? You know what I'm talking about? It's not, uh, it's not horror, but it's like mystery, like freaking, I don't know. Suspense thrillers? Suspense. I I, I like suspense. (laughs) (laughs) So, um, tell us a story about, um, Tell us a story about like you and Aunt Jean Ann. That's a funny story. <clears throat> you should your your aunt Barbara called you last week. Nah, she didn't. She was watching no, the thought, episode. I saw it on Facebook. Well, she didn't call you, but she texted you on your show. But she didn't know how to call. She didn't know how to call in. Tell tell us a story about when you and Aunt Jean Ann were construction workers. Oh God. <laughs> Yeah, you know, they wouldn't believe that. Dylan probably wouldn't believe that shit. <clears throat> you know 75? The one in Ruskin, right there where you get on to 75? We built that shit. Seriously. <laughs> the, on- the on-ramp? <laughs> no, I, worked for, I worked, for, worked for a construction company when I was real young, before I had kids and shit. And um, I worked for a guy, an old guy named Mr. Brown... And he owned this construction Sorry. company, and they built the on ramps for seventy five. And yeah, me and Nicholas's uncle Roll, and um, his aunt Jean Ann, and then there was you know tons of other people. But I mean, we all got on this on this crew and worked. That was the funnest fucking job I ever had in my life. Uh, on Fridays, the the old dude would we'd go down to the pond because there used to be a big pond right there before they put uh, dirt in it and built the road. He would go buy five cases of beer and we'd all sit out there and go freaking swimming and get drunk on Friday nights after work. And everybody had a freaking pistol and the place was full of rats in the, wo- in the weeds and shit. And we'd all sit out there and shoot these fucking rats drunk off our ass. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> and Jean Ann's, er, Nicholas's uncle locked me in a, this is another one. He ran a bulldozer. Um, not a bulldozer, but a um, bucket. You know what I'm talking about? One of those big, heavy-duty buckets. <laughs> they locked me in a fucking porta potty. Okay, <laughs> I went to the bathroom. They locked me in this fucking porta potty and fucking picked it up in this bucket and carried me freaking clear across fucking country in this thing. And you, that it was the fucking grossest thing I've ever ha- had happen to me in my life. Yeah, ask your aunt about that shit. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, Dylan, seriously, think of uh, g- going to the bathroom and somebody comes and picks up the porta potty with a fucking uh, backhoe <laughs> and carries you around in it. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Just imagine it, okay? Yeah. Dude. That was back in my crazy wild days. I want to <laughs> I want to get Justin McWayne to call in and tell him the story from his point of view when we drew the dick on his forehead. Oh, I remember that. I remember that. <laughs> and he went to work with Dylan. Yeah. <laughs> Dylan didn't say shit to him the whole time. And then, like, he gets to work at working as a fucking park ranger with a fucking cock drawn. <laughs> Even after he washed it off, you can still see it. You know, like, when you go to a show, you get X's on your hands, and they still you wash your hands, they don't come off. So he had he just had like faint dick impressions all over his face. His yeah. I remember that. All right, Mom. I love you. I'll talk to you later. All right. I'm going to bed. I love you all, too. (laughs) I love you, Nicholas. Smoke another one, Mom. Yeah, I'm sitting here dying now. I'm smoking one. All right. I love you all. I'll you a baby, I swear. All right. I love you, too. Bye. (laughs) Jesus. This show's winding out now. (laughs) Are we done? Yeah, it's 10.30. That's what we call tonight. Episode 5. <laughs> <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Uh, Play I, it, Josh. I, I, I just got pretty bummed with the uh, with the technical difficulties. So it's all right. Yeah, the quality. It was, it was, all in all, I mean, it was a good show, but we've had better. And I'm kind of bummed because I really wanted to see fucking 
I wanted it to go good because I was really like hyped on seeing Cup Sky on here and shit. But overall, it's, it's pretty awesome. I think it was a pretty good. One. Another show in the bank. Mm-hmm. All right. Good night, Dylan. You have a good night, brother. Good night, Nicholas. Good night, Facebook. <laughs>